In Fusion 360, there's an incredibly powerful tool hidden away, and it's called sketching. So what do beginners need to know? Do I have to use sketches to build stuff? No, you don't have to use sketches to build everything. In fact, if you go to the Create menu, you'll find these primitives or these shapes that you can select. So you can, you can build a pipe or a coil very quickly as you select a plane and click and drag to get the general shape or general overall circumference, envelope, whatever. And you can build these shapes incredibly fast. But this method of modeling can be very limited. So let's talk through what you need to know about sketching. So how do I get started with sketching? There are three things you need to know. First thing, you need to select a plane, or if you already have a model in place, you can select a face and begin sketching. When doing on a plane, I select the plane and I'll go find the sketch icon, or if you were to select any of the sketch entity options like line or circle, that will also start a sketch. Now you can sketch whatever you like. And finally, to your sketch, you'll probably wanna add depth by using some of these features like extrude, revolve, sweep, loft, and some others. And I wanna take a moment to thank Kativ for sponsoring this video. Whether you're implementing a new Autodesk technology or moving engineering data to the cloud, Kativ is a great resource for all things related to design manufacturing and to Autodesk. I've got a link for them down below. Can you tell me how to make something like a half circle, a pipe, an open box, bracket? Once you've started your sketch, you can use these tools under the create pull down to find these different tools that we're gonna unpack here in just a second. But first let's start by sketching a basic shape, sketching with lines, a pipe, a half circle. I'm having trouble getting the lines to work. When you're sketching with lines, the thing you wanna be aware of is the first left click on your mouse starts the line command. So I've clicked at the origin and I'm drawing out or dragging it out. The second click will complete that line. But the thing to be aware of is you're still in the line command, so you can continue to add lines to build your shape. If you'd like to stop, like you've put in enough lines, there's a couple ways to close this off. There's this green check mark right here, you can select that, or you can hit escape on your keyboard. Why are there so many different rectangles? So under the create command, if you go to rectangle, you'll see these three different rectangles. Two point is one of the most common. It's very quick. It's dragging from corner to corner. You're effectively placing the bottom left and the upper right corner. And now you have a rectangle that you can dimension. The center rectangle is great for when you want to center on an object, like I want my origin in the middle, and it also provides these construction lines, which are excellent for using as references. The three-point rectangle is especially helpful when you've got to align to something that's maybe not running orthogonally or um, you know, left and right or up and down. So in this case, I want to align to this angled object up here. I click these two corners and then I drag it out. So it gives me a little more freedom to place this um, at different angles or to create a different shape. So there's more than one circle too? Yeah, so when it comes to circles, there's a lot of different tools here. Everything from being able to start at the center and drag it out. Or if you'd like to be tangent to some other entities that you're designing around. So if I'd like a circle to be tangent to touch these, come down to my circle and I'll find the two point. I'll click here and here. And you can see that it's got to obey that constraint of being tangent or solving to those edges. Now, what about a triangle that we're trying to solve for? We've got three edges that we want to solve against. That's where that three tangent circle is very helpful. I click all three lines. You can see it's solving for those. And then of course the two point and three point circles are very similar where you're clicking two points on the circumference to place it. How do I sketch just part of a circle? 
This is where arcs come in. So arcs are great when you want to sketch part of a circle. And we have three options here with three point and center point arcs. This is great for clicking the two endpoints, then dragging to create the arc you want. This is going to be a lot faster and easier than sketching a full circle and then trying to trim it down. How about making a hex bolt? Okay, a hex bolt is just made up of a polygon that's extruded and then a circle that's extruded and then we can add threads. So for sketching this shape, start with the sketch, select the plane, use polygon. And then in this case, a few different options here um, where you're starting kind of from the center and the circle is inscribed. So effectively you're dragging a diameter of a circle that's gonna create this. Notice this little number, that six over there, if I hit tab, I can control this on my keyboard and I could make this eight sided, 12 sided. Or if we want to make a hex, we'll make a six sided. We'll hit enter. We've got six sides. We'll hit extrude, extrude this up. And then we have the inscribed polygon, which is letting you do a circle kind of on the outside. And then an edge polygon, which let, basically lets you sketch that first edge of the polygon you want, and then you prescribe the number of sides. Explain the slot. Is it just an arc and some lines? Actually, there is an existing tool for sketching slots a little bit faster. If you come down to your create menu, you'll notice that there is a slot command with five different options, all for letting you design different slot styles. Everything from a traditional slot, which is center to center, and then you drag out for your shape. Overall slot, which is gonna give you something similar where you're getting to specify that overall distance or length. And then a center point slot down to um, the additional three point arc slot where you've got an arced slot. I drag it, create the arc, and then drag out to create this shape and how to draw freeform curve stuff. Yeah, when you're ready to move beyond lines and arcs in Fusion 360, that's where we're touching into splines, which is incredibly powerful for creating these complex shapes. But as you might be able to guess, it can be pretty difficult to dimension and constrain and drive this how you want. So it's a little bit more advanced and for another video. So now that we've talked a little bit about all the different entities and creation tools that you have for sketching, you'll need to know a couple things about how to control your sketch, and that's using constraints and dimensions. Be sure to check out this other video where we go into this more in depth. What's the most important thing for sketching, constraints or dimensions? Well, to wrap up our video today, dimensions and constraints are both very important, but I would say try to drop in the constraints that you know first. So when you look up above, you're gonna notice this constraints menu, and this is helpful for applying these relationships. What do you know about your design? If you know that these two things are always going to be equal, then what you'll wanna do is select them. You can use control on your keyboard or command on a Mac and select these two lines. Now they're always gonna stay equal. And then I would say to add any dimensions that are missing to make this fully defined or fully explained to Fusion 360. And this will make editing a lot easier. This is all black and it's fully defined, so it doesn't need any more constraints or dimensions. Do I have to fully define sketches? You don't have to. When you're just designing and getting a concept built, it's great. You can use dimensions and constraints as sparing as you like. The one thing I'd want to remind you of is that when you make design changes, when I change this to 65, it obeys the same shape because these things will stay equal and this angle will stay there. When things aren't fully uh, explained to Fusion 360 and you make a change, then it can change in ways you don't really want it to. It doesn't stay or follow the, your original design intent. That's where dimensions constraints are incredibly helpful. Hey, I hope this video helps. I'll see you guys in the next one.